Grizzly bear recovery in the Northern Rockies has been a wildlife success story, especially within the Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem, or the GYE. But with success comes responsibility. And for grizzly bear specialist, Jeremiah Smith, that involves community engagement and bear conflict management. So today we're gonna to go down to Paradise Valley. We're going up a, a drainage to shut down a, a research trap site that we had set. So we try to get some research captures in every year. Um, we work very closely with the interagency grizzly bear study team. And um, they are the research entity for grizzly bear trapping through the USGS. So um, it's all one big family. Trapping and collaring bears is important for FWP's grizzly bear research and monitoring. The traps are strategically located throughout the GYE. The data gathered is crucial in understanding bear behavior, but with hunting season approaching, traps are extracted to reduce the dangerous potential of hunter-bear conflict. Prior to approaching a trap site, Smith and his team take the necessary precautions. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fly a drone and clear the trap site. No matter what we're doing when we're trapping, we always do the same things. One, the most number one important rule is personnel safety. So a couple of things. One is everybody stays in the vehicle until the scene is clear. And then once that's done, we're gonna open the truck doors and you can get out. At that point, you need to stay by the truck. We want people's eyes looking around for movement, bears and anything like that. If something's coming or you see a bear, just yell bear and get back in the vehicle as fast as you can. We carry shotguns, pistols and bear spray on every trap that we do. And it's just a safety measure that's been taught to us from our forefathers for a very long time. And it's very successful and it does a really good job. The drones utilized by Jeremiah and his team have infrared capabilities for visibility in dense forest canopy. With the area cleared from above, the ground team prepares to move in on the trap site. Criteria for the Yellowstone ecosystem was satisfied back in 99, 2000, you know, and, and in the time period between then and now, the density of grizzlies and the distribution of grizzlies has changed significantly, both for Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming, and in the park. And so, you know, folks, we've been pushing how to live and be around grizzly bears for a very long time. And I think a lot of folks are very familiar with that. What we're dealing with now is not areas like this that are in the core in the recovery zone, but areas that are outside of the recovery zone and outside of the demographic monitoring area for the Yellowstone and areas where people haven't seen grizzlies in hundred years. And so, you know, what does that look like? And what does that coexistence and tolerance look like? On the border of Yellowstone National Park and with a population of just under 900, the community of Gardner takes a grassroots approach to the reality of living among grizzly bears in the Yellowstone ecosystem. This is Evan Stout, he's with Bear Aware Gardner. Bear Awareness Gardner is a small nonprofit here in town under the Bear Creek Council umbrella. And our focus is to try to essentially bear-proof Gardner and get the residents and the business owners the supplies or the goods that they need to keep their property bear safe and then also do some outreach and education with the public and kind of most importantly with the residents to make sure we all know how and when and where we need to be taking those precautions. Um, part of Bear Awareness Gardener is we want to make everybody aware. We want to we want to get the word out that you know it's bears have been using this this basin for hundreds of years, thousands of years and they're still using it and, um, and that's where that infrastructure really comes into place because where we as an agency start getting really concerned about bears of either species is when there's any level of habituation 
or food conditioning. And when bears that are used to coming in and around people start to actually get food rewards of a non-natural food source, those are the two kind of things that really come together when, it, when we start thinking about management actions because a habituated and food conditioned grizzly bear can be a very dangerous thing. They're dangerous and wild animals in and of themselves. They're very unpredictable. But at the end of the day, if they start getting in the garbage and they start getting used to being around people, those are bears that we you know, potentially have are gonna have issues with when it comes to human safety. And so we work very closely with NGOs, the Forest Service, the BLM, National Park Service, and the Fish and Wildlife Service. It's all one big group that works together on a day-to-day -day basis to handle and manage grizzly bears amongst a growing human population and a growing bear population. Although the team has cleared the site, the trail camera sheds some new light of the recent activity in the area. Uh, that there was a bear here about three hours ago. So, but we're pulling these sites out because hunting season is starting. Smith reminds those who are venturing to hunt in bear country, keep your head on a swivel. But be realistic about where you're going, what you're doing and what your skill set is while you're out there and understanding that, at least in this part of Montana, um, our encounters are surprise encounters at close distances. So they happen fast and they happen quick. So muscle memory is everything if and when you have an encounter as far as practicing what you're gonna do to deal with that encounter. Um, whether it's bear spray or pistol, we recommend bear spray because it's very easy to use and, and when it's something is happening, it throws out a cloud. Whatever you're gonna use to defend yourself, you need to be practicing with that and not just a week before you're gonna be going in the timber. You need to be out hiking and doing those things and utilizing those tools so that you don't have to think about what you're gonna do when and if and fortunately or unfortunately if it does happen. So being smart and being prepared is everything when it comes to hiking, hunting, bike riding, whatever you're going to do in, in Occupy Grizzly Bear Habitat. I'm Lauren Carnam, and remember, the outside is in us all.